here. Yay, another episode of the best flower talk show there is. Hi everyone, I'm Ana Galena. I'm a floral designer and I love sharing the joy of living with flowers. Yes, welcome everyone. I am Kara Jameson. I am looking all festive because it's almost 4th of July here in the United yeah. States. I am a cut flower grower and educator, and I just really love to talk about flowers and how to grow them. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here today. Dion? Oh my goodness. I'm a little jealous of this. this thing. <laughs> like I, I wish you'd sent one to all of us. I have these little guys that I'm like, can I shove this into like, yeah. <laughs> It's very festive. I'm excited to be here for Firecracker Florals. Is this episode 10? I think yes. so. This 10? is episode wow. 10. Yes. Oh, you guys, I'm Dion Woods. I'm the owner and artist at the Turquoise Iris. I'm a creative business coach and artist, and I am thrilled to be a part of Bloom TV. Um, you know who we are, but we really want to know who you are, too. We want to know who our viewers are. So I want to prompt you today to tell us where you are, where you're watching from, because we know we have people all over the United States, but we also know we have people in Mexico. We have them all over the world. Even if you're going to catch this on the replay, let us know. We want to know where you are. And we also want to know if you have questions. We yes. want to know if you have suggestions. We're yes. planning our show. We want to plan yeah. all the way through the end of this year. We're really excited. Mm -hmm. We're only on episode 10, but before you know it, we'll be on 20 and 30 and 40. Yes. And yes. We're, we're here for it. We're really excited about it. So we want to just remind you to comment and say hello. Tell us where you're from. We want to know who our audience is. And before we jump into today's episode, we're going to play our favorite song. Are we ready? appreciate it. Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Sherry. So last week's show was super fun. We had Christina Berrigan on from Floor Society, and she taught us about how she has built this worldwide educational florist community. And we just, we had such a good show, didn't we? Just like talking and connecting. And she was telling us how, you know, she's going to start a garden with the students that she teaches yes. because you know, flowers just really connect you to nature and, and it's just, it's peaceful, you know, when you, when you grow them. And so uh, we thought it would be fun to play you a quick clip of last week's show. So let's do that now. Yes. Let's check it out. You are still on a hamster wheel doing the same thing over and over, feeling like you're never catching up. It's time to create systems. It's time to streamline your process. It's time to start growing a team. Because when I did all of those things, life got easier and mm -hmm. profitability got um, higher. It's just a really nourishing flower. They're often used in uh, disasters where maybe oil has been spilled. Like there, some, some kind of toxin is in the environment because the whole sunflower plant can actually absorb these toxins and they're used to help clean up the environment, which I think is really What cool. I noticed in some of the sunflower images, especially from the Van Gogh, is that he started with a darker background, meaning colors like burnt umber, burnt sienna, and more of a mustard color. Mm -hmm. So this is so easy, you guys. So if you're shaking <laughs> your head saying, I would never do this, I want you to know Yes, you possibly definitely can. So I am just going to do easy. See, you just do easy. Special easy. locations always require flowers, always. But you don't need to wait for a special day to get flowers. I don't mean, if you have flowers every week in your home, I guarantee when you walk into the room that has flowers, you will immediately smile. It, mm -hmm. it, it will yeah. be inevitable. You will walk through that room and you will turn to look and you will be like, <sighs> and that pause, it's gonna bring so much wellness to you. 
Oh. I have a whole new respect for sunflowers. I'm going to tell you that. For, I learned from both of you, but as well as Christina with business and how building her community and implementing systems without help. And it's it can be such a struggle. And unfortunately, a lot of businesses that want to build communities, they stop before they really got started because mm -hmm. systems and overwhelm. And so that the way that we talked about sunflowers also being like a leader in your community Mm -hmm. in the garden um yeah. that filtered over into my my weekly lesson you all i mm -hmm. decided to teach sunflowers in my group Yay! and <laughs> i went ahead and did a whole 36 by 24 canvas last week in my group after that wow. episode because i i just felt like that you know the meaning of sunflower i learned was gratitude and loyalty uh -huh. and this i was so grateful for my group and their loyalty towards me so mm -hmm. it really has trickled down through days later uh-huh. I love the energy that goes on around us because this week I also taught in my membership program about sunflowers. And it was because I got so many comments from viewers telling me like, Anna, I have a hard time working with them. We would like to know more about how we can enjoy them in our flower arrangements. So this energy that we have going where we're all here at the same time, the same things. And I want to take this opportunity really fast to tell all of our viewers about Christina's Bloom Pro Bloom Bundle because yes. today is the last day you can get it, okay? Remember, this was only going on sale for five days, and today is the last day to get the Bloom Bundle Christina mm -hmm. told us about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Bloom Bundle is really great. It has 25 uh, individuals that are in the floral industry, and there is 15 resources for your business, like everything mm -hmm. from like how to how to price your flowers, how to price the stems. And it's not just uh, for a flower business. Like uh, there's a class in there that just talks about business in general and like how you should be pricing yourself, you know, as a business owner. Mm. And um, there's other topics in there like Pinterest and um, CE, uh, SEO stuff in there. And then if you want to learn about floral design, there's also multiple floral design courses in there as well. So. Um, we can Absolutely. post the uh, Bloom Bundle link after this uh, for you guys on our Instagram page, the Flowers and Friends <laughs> underscore talk show for Bloom TV. If you guys want, just want to have a look and go check that website out. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a quick reminder that I want to make sure everybody is very aware about because we have a big thing yeah. today. Yeah. All right. Where Women Create collaborated. You've heard us before. You would have seen Jesse before. Uh, Jessica came on and she told her story. Well, she has the very first produced video between Bloom and the collaboration with What Women Create. And it's on newsstands right now, which means you can go to Barnes and Noble or you can go to Whole Foods, Michaels, anywhere where they are sold. And you can pick up your copy and you can actually see that the the link is there i believe we have a qr code actually where the video will pop up for you if you missed it on bloom tv you can watch the replay there yes that's exact thank you for posting that um it's such a good story it's such a beautiful well done video and we're all so excited about that the other reminder is we have a giveaway going on every week. Oh, yeah. So I wanna make sure that you go to Bloom TV and subscribe to that. So the giveaway means I'm gonna give you free paint and I'm <laughs> happy to do that every single week. Um, yeah. We also are giving nice. away an annual subscription to Bloom TV. So mm -hmm. if you check that out, take a screenshot. So when we're doing that display, if you're worried you're gonna forget and you don't have time to watch the replay, just do a quick screenshot if you're watching from your phone. Right, ladies? Yes, right. Please. Just one quick thing. The magazine will be in stores on July 5th. Right now, people are getting it on the mail, but you cannot find it until July 5th. Thank so you. Thank if you. you go to Barnes & Noble and don't see it, it's go coming. back on. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies, well, we have a super fun show today. So in our theme with getting ourselves ready for the 4th of July celebrations, we have Jesse Sierra Ross that is going to be with us today. Hello, Jesse. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hi. So Jessie. happy to be with you. Jesse, I have been obsessed with watching your videos, and I just want you to know that I popped on a few. I wanted to know more about you, and they sucked me in. You know what it is? You know what it is? It's a, your photography and your lighting. It's mm -hmm. like 
everything just is so edible. I just want to pull it out of the screen. You have nailed your branding, sister. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it was a process. I'll tell you, I'll be very honest with you to find what made us special and uh, what made something straight to the hips baby. And, uh, you know, it's light and bright with lush florals. I mean, how can you get any better than that, especially when you're connecting with flowers and friends and Bloom TV? Yes, we're so excited for all that you're going to share with us today. I can't wait to try it later on this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I so so Jesse has actually sent us all the recipes that we're gonna uh -huh. be posting, and I'm like, okay, I gotta go to the store and get this for this weekend, <laughs> that for this weekend. <laughs> I so and we'll post everything on our Instagram page, so that's why you need to follow the inst our flowers and friends official on Instagram because we're posting the recipes there. <laughs> Yes. yes, absolutely. Just a quick reminder to all of you popping on. We want to, we see you, we see your comments. We are grateful for you. And this is an open, casual discussion. Just mm -hmm. imagine you're hanging out with all of us in your living room and we are going to sip some cocktails. If we could through the screen, we're going to do that today. <laughs> Um, she has a magic wand with all of her delicacies. I don't really know the right terminology, but my goodness, I even saw that there was a vegetarian recipe list on your website. So I was really excited about that. Absolutely. We want to cater to everyone because the whole <laughs> inspiration for this is to get people back in the kitchen and enjoying what they make, what they create. So vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, mixology, cocktails, desserts, we have it all. Jesse, I would really love to know how you began your career. That's a very good question because it's sort of a paradox, <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I'm honest about it. Um, I actually originally was a professional ballerina from Boston. So my life was all point shoes and, and tutus and going to the bar, but not the bar that you're thinking of where you can get a gin and tonic, <laughs> but the ballet bar where you would work for hours and hours and you know during my time in the theater in the studio I kind of honed my eye for sleek clean beautiful lines very feminine sort of technique and when I eventually retired from professional dance moved out to the country with my family I found myself wanting to do something I needed to be creative I was going stir crazy because I had baby babble in one ear and this urge to create in the other so that's when I started to cook and share what I made with my, oh my friends, God. with my family, and then eventually to this greater audience, both via the website, during TV segments, press. It's been astounding. And what I like to think is that those sort of techniques, those sort of um, years and experiences on stage have really helped me to perfect how to write a recipe how to teach and then how to present in a, a simple but beautiful manner wow oh my gosh i could listen to you all day yes <laughs> I, I was mentioning your photography and i'm really you know it, it's i'm blown away because you've it's so continuous with all of your platforms and then your whole demeanor, your whole setup. Um, it really draws your audience in. I know that you do a lot of television, right? Correct. I do a, a lot of television. Thankfully, I'm so blessed. Um, but yes, it's the, the light and bright. We, we came about doing this. My husband and I are a creative team for our website and our blog. And I do most of the styling now and he does most of the photography. Um, but we came about during a time when dark and moody was the thing. And then suddenly you end up scrolling through your social media feeds and all of a sudden it's lush flowers and there's fruits and there's cocktails and it's light and it's it's very um, fairy tale-ish. You know, I want something that looks yeah. like you just stepped yes. towards the seashore, maybe the south of France, or you, you're you wandering through this luscious uh, English countryside garden with the herbs and the flowers falling over yeah. each other, but in a way that is not overwhelming. You know, I want you to see these images and feel curious, feel hungry. <laughs> But overall, that you want more. It's working. That, oh, that's wonderful it's, to hear. <laughs> it's working, girl. We're excited to see what you've got here with us today. Very yes. good. Should we get started? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Please. All right. So we are going to be creating some amazing barbecue-ready cocktails. The first one we're going to be creating is the Creamy Coconut Paloma. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what the heck is a Paloma? Isn't that grapefruit? 
Yeah, you're right. But really, when you're talking about mixology, a Paloma is more akin to a margarita, except for one difference. You know okay. what that difference is? No. no. <laughs> Aha. A margarita is tequila, citrus, sweetener, and orange liqueur. Okay. A Paloma are those same ingredients, plus a little extras, but without the orange liqueur. So that's the only difference. It's kind of like the younger sister. Okay. Of the margarita. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a coconut based one. It's going to be light and creamy, but it has zero dairy in it. So it's really beautiful and refreshing on a hot summer day. So the very first thing we're going to start with is, of course, the coconut milk. Okay. Now, I like to use box co coconut milk that you would find in the freezer case or the dairy, not the dairy aisle, the refrigerated aisle. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, it's lighter. You don't want coconut milk in a can because it's very, very fatty and it will separate in your cocktail. So you don't want that in this. You want something that's perfectly blended. Oh. So we have about two and a half ounces here. Uh -huh. If you love coconut milk, you can use more. If you're not a big fan, use a little less. I love coconut milk. Yeah. The next, uh, I do too. I am. I have it in my coffee. I have it in my cereal. I can't. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, in this one, I have about an ounce and a half of fresh lime juice. Now that lime is zesty. It's punchy. It's, you know, exhilarating on the palate. It's got a but kick. Do, it has yeah. a kick. Exactly. And it plays so well with tequila, but do not use bottled. Do not do it. Don't do it. You'll heal, hear me scream from afar. Don't <laughs> do bottled. <laughs> Get your citrus zester. Fresh. Squeeze it out. It's going to be fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> right in. It takes no time and it makes such a difference in taste mm -hmm. and quality. Okay. So that goes in. The next thing we're going to do is add about an ounce of simple syrup. Who knows about simple syrup? I'm sure one of you knows about simple syrup. Oh, I do. Aha. I Tell me. Um, well, it, isn't that where you boil water and sugar together, right? Yes. No. Okay. Yes. So it's, <laughs> oh, well, I, I love that you know that as a, a flower gardener, because this is the same substance that the, those honey, hummingbirds love, you know? Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. but we're going to drink it ourselves. So <laughs> <laughs> it's sugar and water, equal parts, boiled until it's syrupy. And the reason we use a simple syrup versus straight table sugar is that it's already dissolved. So you don't have to worry about getting that grit in your drink. Mm -hmm. You can use this even in your coffee, your iced tea, your smoothies if you're looking for a sweetener. And the best part is if you want to amplify a flavor, you can also infuse a simple mm -hmm. syrup with herbs. Fresh herbs are dried or even the flowers. I have made mm -hmm. peony simple syrups. I've made violet and lavender simple syrups. It's amazing. This, oh, this is plain simple syrup. Mm -hmm. So right in. It's Next, we're going to use elderflower liqueur, which is this beautiful, Ooh. vibrant. Yes, you know what Does elderflower it smell liqueur. smell like a flower? I've never smelled Oh, it. it's like diving into a bouquet. It's okay. amazing. Ooh. And it creates this floral background note to this cocktail. So okay. we're just going to add a splash right there. And of course, the star of the show, an aged tequila. Reposado tequila, it means it's a mid-aged tequila, so it's not a blanco, which is white and kind of raw on the tongue. Very common to use in margaritas. And it's not an añejo, which is a syrupy aged tequila that you would sip more than you would throw into a cocktail. This is the most beautiful sort of middle ground. It has a sense of pepper, of spice, of, you know, this very beautiful vanilla-ish quality to it. I'm going to add that right in. Can can in Next. case people are not, I have to ask you. In case people are not taking notes right now, which I hope they are, but if they're not, are all of these recipes available on your website, Jesse? They are indeed, and in fact, I make it even easier because I make them with recipe cards that you can print. So, oh. if you are not a Pinterest person or you don't like saving a gazillion windows on your browser, you can print the recipe. And they're online, they're, there's a great catalog of recipes and cocktails for you to choose from. All of them are delicious, balanced, and definitely approachable. Beautiful. So we added ice, uh -huh. we close up our shaker, and this is when we start to do our arm workout. <laughs> we're just gonna shake for about 20 to 30 seconds until it's frosted. Okay. And while you're shaking, you can start thinking about what am I going to serve this cocktail in? Is it going to be a tumbler? Is it going to be a tall glass? Or is it going to be a gorgeous coupe? Oh, I Isn't love that lovely? Coupe. Yes, a it is. Coupe. A coupe is traditionally used for champagne or gin sours, but it's marvelous for this cocktail. So, so right in, we're going to strain. Watch this. Oh, yum. Jesse, I would love to know, how did you have to go to school to learn all of this? How? Uh, uh, no, I'm a consummate <laughs> student. 
Um, <laughs> I, I like to drink. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's terrible. I always joke that I, I came to cocktails because I have three young children um, and they forced me. <laughs> but no, I love cocktails because there's a way of layering fresh ingredients that, are, uh -huh. that is really nuanced uh -huh. and detail oriented. And I really enjoy creating balanced cocktails. So every single one of my cocktails is going to be rounded. You're never going to get like a pop of vodka or a pop of gin. You're going to get floral, citrus, tart, sometimes mm -hmm. even savory and spicy mm -hmm. along with my liqueurs and liquors. Um, so it's one of those things I just really enjoy doing. And I've developed a, a style and technique and uh -huh. I'm thankful that people enjoy it. Wow. Yes. Where do you now, get your flowers, Jesse? Oh, good question. I knew someone was going to ask that. Mm -hmm. I actually grow them. So I have a Yay. whole flower garden in my backyard. I grow pansies, violets, lavender. Um, I also really enjoy growing geraniums. Um, it, anything that's edible and food safe, it's, it's much easier to grow your own than say to go out and buy, but you can, you can buy online. There are various, uh, people that you can buy from, or even your local health food store will have edible flowers. And that's the key edible, because you do not want to make your guests or yourself sick. So yes. that way you ensure the highest quality, but mm -hmm. even for this one, I have some beautiful Thai purple basil. I'm going to garnish right there Beautiful. and I have some pansies right on and that is the creamy coconut pearl cheers wow. beautiful cheers cheers beautiful. My cool. now this next one is easy peasy ready for the patio the sunshine the pool the fireworks oh, yeah, yeah. and you don't even need a shaker oh, oh. you ready <laughs> yes okay all let's right see what have. Let's so we are going to be making <laughs> a fresh grapefruit april spritz okay Fresh. Have you ever had one? No. no. Oh, no, you're you missing are. out. Open my eyes to new flavors for sure. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> this is a four ingredient, really, cocktail. All you need is a large glass and a stir. So it's based with Prosecco. Now, let's see if we can get this open. This is one of those times when you're at a party, you're entertaining, a hush falls over the crowd. They're wondering if you're going to be able to open this. I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to open this <laughs> now. <laughs> the pup. No pressure. The pup. Ready, pup. Did go. you know? Did you know though? With champagne and prosecco, it's not supposed to make that pop. Oh. In fact, if it does, it means all the gases came out. I didn't know this until recently. Oh. Because with prosecco, it's a sweet wine that's had um, nitrogen, I think, injected into it. And with champagne, it's natural. But we want it to be very quiet. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, oh so oh, <laughs> the audience was waiting for the pop, though. Everyone's like, I'm waiting for the pop. I'm waiting for the pop. <laughs> well, I, I gotta tell you that face I make, I make it every time I open a bottle of champagne or prosecco. But we have a beautiful, it's a not too sweet prosecco, and we're going to follow a four, three, two, one ratio. Now, do what you will with this, but what we're going to do is add four ounces of prosecco right in i'm going to eyeball this because really it's summertime the living is easy yes <laughs> absolutely it's we're I just going to add yeah there's I don't a like really to good anything. question out there they're asking if you have to disinfect the flowers before you use them that's an excellent question and i would say if you are growing your flowers by yourself and you know that they haven't been sprayed with pesticides and this is the benefit of growing your own all you have to do is give it a good rinse, possibly with a mix of white vinegar and water too, if you're feeling very you know, uh, detail-oriented about it. But no, not typically if you've grown it yourself. If you're foraging for flowers, yes, you must, because you don't know where those flowers have been or what has been sprayed on them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Good device. Uh, yep. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, this is April, which is a bitter orange liqueur it's a fortified wine which means it's a spirit that has quite a bit of sugar in it and you can drink it as an aperitif as the italians do over ice with a little bit of orange and i have to say a april spritz is a classic italian pre-dinner drink i drink them all summer long it doesn't even matter what time of day well it does matter what time of day i wait until five <laughs> o'clock um but it's light and it's easy and so refreshing and what's great about it is you don't get that tipsy so you can have one or two of them and you know enjoy yourself and not have to worry 
So again, we're going to add three ounces of April and look at that color. That's so right pretty. In. Look at the color. Isn't it gorgeous? And it smells like orange. It's just delightful. The next step we're going to use is, again, fresh citrus. I squeeze some fresh ruby red grapefruits. Do not get bottled. Fresh is best. <laughs> Eyeballing best. that right in. <clears throat> Perfect. Now we're going to add just a splash of simple syrup. I have it in this jar here that I keep in my refrigerator. And okay. what's great about simple syrup is it can last for about three weeks before you oh, need to okay. get rid of it. Wow. So right here, if you don't like very sweet drinks, dip it. You don't need it. I like a touch. Some people put about a tablespoon. I like about a teaspoon. Right that in. Is, it is like a summer day sunset right from the bottle. Right? So yes. <laughs> and then just a little bit of soda water. Give it some just to cake. top it off. Okay. And then you take a very long spoon and you're going to gently stir just to toss it around. Wow. And then the fun part, you're going to garnish. I love using fresh French lavender. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to twist and sink. I am going to also create a little garnish out of a piece of citrus zest. You make it look so oh, easy. Yes. Oh, but because it is. <laughs> If someone who hasn't gone to school for it professionally and has learned everything, you know, by trial and error and watching can do it, you can do it too. It really is so easy. You can not only impress yourself, but you can impress your guests with a stunning, beautiful, bespoke cocktail. And truly, it's, it's easy peasy. This is a little geranium, but violets would be gorgeous in this. Beautiful. And beautiful. That is so summer easy. in a glass. So twice Brian. I know. We can't I'll, wait I'll to try, try it as well. Um, oh, you yeah. try it. <laughs> Cheers. It's, it's amazing. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, Thank you my for friend. letting me show you my love of cocktails. Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you for so showing nice. us. Yes. Absolutely. Can't wait to try them. So it's time for the flower centerpiece for this weekend's parties, this weekend's gatherings and i really like to make your flowers be something really easy that anyone can do that you don't need to put a lot of effort into it and that it's going to be easy because you're doing so many things if you're <coughs> sorry hosting a party so to me mason jars are like the ideal way to make a centerpiece you sure. already have the jars and you're reusing, which is something we need to do for the earth right now. So I always save my jars for, from everything and I have them ready for when I need them for my flowers. I think three mason jars are ideal if you have a long table or if you have a round table. If you have a long table, you just put three in the table and it gives space also for all the things you might be putting into your table like ketchup condiments or whatever you're doing depending on what you're preparing and if you have a round table the same you put three mason jars and they fill the space perfectly then well i have red blue and white flowers and I like to buy like one bunch of each. I got Alstromedias because because they were fun red. This there are not that many blue flowers. And oh my god, this second I just forgot the name of this ones. But carrot and those are cool. Orangium. Thank you, Orangium. Yes, <laughs> I was blank. That's With teamwork the right there. Yes, and this are so cool because I always like to have a fun element in my tables because people will be like, what's that? Is that real? So mm -hmm. it brings a conversation piece. And then I have white scabiosa. Mm, those mm -hmm. are awesome. Beautiful. When you're making uh, mason jars, I like to have like, I don't know what the word is, but like fluffy, bunchy flowers, not mm -hmm. single stem, because mm -hmm. you will need more flowers. So I have my three bunches and I will use one third of each for each one of my mason jars. I just divide them and I'm only going to do one right now, but okay. it's a third of each. And I start with the bulkiest one. That mm -hmm. way 
it's the stems of the flowers that will help every, all the other flowers look fluffy. Mm -hmm. You always need to measure. And one thing that it's that I think it's very important and it's a key ingredient because most people will put their flowers straight in the mason jar. So right. at the end, it will be like everything's crowded together. Is that a word? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have yeah. to put them at an angle. That right. way, we will give them more space, more space for them to be all over. See? Yes. Like so you're starting with the white because they're more full. And then uh -huh. you're putting them in at an angle so they'll kind of drape open rather than straight up at the top. Okay. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm following. And then I'm putting the other ones that are bulkiest, which are my eryngium. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I got three, but, and I'll try to have them at a different size because we don't want them all to be the same height. Mm -hmm. We want them to be playful, to have movement. So this is something very important when okay. you're cutting them. Since you're not putting them straight, mm -hmm. you need to measure where you want it to be and cut at that part of the angle. Because if you measure it, from the table, then it's gonna be too long. So you need to measure it to the size, to the side, because you're putting it at an angle. Okay. That way, those are the key elements for making mm -hmm. a fluff arrangement. You're mm -hmm. inserting them at an angle, so you need to measure at an angle, not to the table. Yep. And you're turning your jar around, which I think is always a key element, is to actually don't forget the back. There is no back. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So see, everything's looking fluffy. Can you see the blue flowers? Kind yes, of? yes. Oh, no. They had amazing flowers. texture. Even though my outer areas have a lot of flowers, but they're the smallest one. So these are the ones I put at the end. I could have used Gerbera daisies, any red flower. Mm -hmm. But see, and we keep going to the sides. It's easy, really. You just need to measure have your stems clean, otherwise you will have bacteria and we don't want any bacteria. No. And things this is looking you good. Do, you can do this like three, I mean, you can do them today for your Monday gathering and it's gonna be relaxing, relaxing. You'll get to enjoy them longer. And then after your party, you can have your guests take one home and that's going to be like so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. I love the red, white, and blue thing. Now I have to ask all of you more floral educated people. Can we eat those too? No, no. no. I, I got this at, at the supermarket, but not in the, in the vegetable section. I got them at their florist section and you cannot buy, eat flowers from your flower shop. Right. Those have a lot of pesticides and chemicals and things that are not good for you. Right. Okay. Well, and my, the um the blue ahead, the blue orangium. I know it's hard to see right now, but it's a thistle, so it would hurt. Oh. <laughs> I love yes, to grow that one. Thank you. I get I that now. Use, I love to use scabiosa because that's in bloom in my farm right now too. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> so fun. I love I that. Love Anna, that's really beautiful, and I want to thank you for the red, white, and blue theme. I actually tried to pick up a few things and 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 plan a little bit. I've I've got some little festive things, and um, I'm excited to share with you my little project. But I also wanted to thank Jesse again because I went through a rabbit hole watching your videos yesterday, <laughs> and I was I've, I've mentioned them so much, but. All that you do and all that you offer. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching today and you really enjoyed what you saw, which I don't know how you couldn't, you can go to bloomtvnetwork.com and look up her name. And she has videos there, which they're, you know, all of our videos are not very long. Uh, but make sure you're also following her on social media as well. Um, she is often on television and you can follow her journey as you go, not only learn from her, but it's very enjoyable, energizing and all of her drinks, not only do they evoke all of that energy, but her content is absolutely stunning. So thank you. I am very, very thrilled with that. So the, um, I think we even have a clip that we can post if, if oh. that's possible. Can we, do we have a clip we can show? That would be amazing.
certainly add some grapefruit slices to your pitcher. This helps give a hint to your guests what exactly is going on in that cocktail. Right in. We have some beautiful flowers. I like to think of this cocktail like, you know, a Midsummer Night's Party. So we want a lot of floral elements. We have some beautiful cosmos, a purple pansy, and some flowering herbs. And this, my friends, is a refreshing and delicious solstice grapefruit basil smash. So I'm positive that we just need the Jesse show. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, I'm hooked, girl. I am, I am a big time fan. We need the Jesse show. That was like, like, I forget that I'm just getting ready to paint and do a demo because I'm like, <gasps> oh. anyway, anyway, I do have something quick for you guys today. And this is my little dollar store DIY easy peasy thing. So your challenge, and we're all going to take this challenge this week, ladies. I want you to go into your cabinets. And I want you to pull out a vase or an old something or another that you're not using anymore that you didn't pay very much for. This was from the dollar store. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it look like an anthropology hack. Okay. Oh. Uh, anthropology wow. is my favorite store. This was not much. It's very basic. It's fine. We agree. It's fine. Right? Yes. You put the best <laughs> flowers in it. It's fine. However, I want to show you, and the challenge is for you all this week as well. And if you do this project with us and post it on social media, tag us, the Flowers and Friends Talk Show, and we will share your project. This is what I've done since, and I'm going to finish it with you guys today. Ooh. Same jar. Wow. What? Wow. Same jar, friends. So dollar store wow. to anthropology, Stunning. all in a few minutes. Uh -huh. Um the paint that I use is a clay-based paint, so it's really easy to paint on glass or any type of metal or mirrors, anything that's shiny. The clay in my paint will actually stick to just about anything without priming. So just to get this dripped look, I used two colors. I used a dark teal, which is called Bohemian Blue. And this is from DIY paint. Like it's a clay based paint, which means it's really porous and it's clay. So it'll adhere to anything, which I don't like priming. I'm going to tell you right yeah. now. I don't like priming. I, it's a, it's a, I don't like sanding. I like to just paint. So another color is called prom queen. So I took these two colors, lightly brushed it on this, and then I sprayed it with water and I literally just let it drip down the jar make sure you have something covered you have a drop cloth you have plastic down and then i took our golden ticket and i let it drip that's it i walked away from it for two hours and i let it and i thought i could leave it like that but this is a flower talk show so <laughs> what are we gonna do here we're gonna uh -huh. dive on in with some flowers so i have a a plate of acrylics you don't need a whole lot of color but all I've done since then is I dove in with my favorite brushes. They are my brushes of choice. They're from Paint Pixie, and I love the quality. I've taken my angled brush, no big deal, and just twisted. Twisted, followed the bottom of the vase down. And I feel like I always say this is easy because if I can, you can. Look, I'm just making lines. The trick is dipping multiple colors on your brush. And that gives it more of an organic, natural look. So if you've got some reds or like different shades of green, it wouldn't even hurt to have just a drop of black on my brush. You can see that I have multiple colors here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start from the top right here at the neck. And I'm going to make anthropology wish they had my vase. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna... One day we can have a Dion, a turquoise iris line of anthropology <gasps> basis. Oh, now you're, now you're telling all my dreams out loud. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> you you can make that dreams. on the mason jars, right? Yes, you could do that straight onto your mason jar, sister. You could use this paint. Um, there are tons of different paints you could use. I only know what I use, and this is why I'm uh -huh. familiar with it. So you could use other paints. You could use your acrylics as well. Um, I just don't know how well they'll drip the way uh -huh. that I use my clay-based paints, okay? Mm -hmm. Now let's do a flower, because I did this flower here. Okay? Oh, that's beautiful. Simple, simple. Like Angle brush. Watch this. Y'all watching? Yes. Yes. All right, easy. Just shake it around in a few circles. Just shake it around. Okay. Okay, I have white and yellow on here together. Uh -huh. So 
I want to see everybody's projects this week. We're going to challenge you to pull <laughs> something out of your cabinet that you're no longer using. So you can tell that that's kind of got, I mean, you can tell. Okay, yes. We're going to, okay, we're all on the same yes. page. I'm like, you can tell, right? Yeah, we can <laughs> tell. It can be either a lysianthus or an, or an anemone. That's exactly oh. what I was thinking, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take my round brush and I'm just going to give it a little bit of center, just or just very organically. Not, no, it's not going to matter too much, right? And I'm just going to like do a few lines here and weave some of that black in here just for some shading. It's not going to be too hard. Then I'm going to dip into my orangey red color. I have red cadmium and I'm mixing it with my yellow cadmium. I'm just going to take this warm color and I'm going to dump it on some of these petals for a more natural look as well. And I'm just going to repeat that process around and around and around. And we are going to make anthropology go, huh, huh. <laughs> you think you can well, do this, ladies? You yeah, think you can? Uh, yeah. Expect to call this afternoon. <laughs> I, I just want to show you. you. Definitely. Uh, oh, well, I'm just kind of, I'm totally teasing with that. I just want to say that you don't have to spend a lot of money to have mm -hmm. a big impact when you're setting up your table or you're wanting to style a home. I know a lot of people kind of hesitate having company over because they th think, think they have to really decorate and play it up and do all of these different things. But I think we all have things at the top of the cabinet or, you know, down in the below at the bottom of the cabinet all the way to the back. And it's like, okay, what am I going to do with this? Let's get some paint on it. Let's mm -hmm. have some fun and let's jazz it up a little bit. So I grabbed these and I think I've combined my style with a little 4th of July style. That oh, is. so a couple of things here. First yes. of all, Girl Upcycled Studio said, imagine a collection of these. Dion, I think I see something in your future that you need to do, first of all. <laughs> and um, second of all, someone asked, uh, where's the comment right here? Oh, where should they post if they do this uh, DIY project? Dion, you want to tell them where they can post? Absolutely. First off, girl upcycled Kelly, my girl. Uh, Kelly has hosted a retreat with me. She is my oh. my most precious intuitive artist. So Kelly, I'll only do it if you help me. How about that? We'll do it um. together. Um, and second, if you want to do a project, post it on social media. That's We're on Instagram. Um, that's our primary for the Flower Talk Show um, at Flowers and Friends. And here's the little banner showing you what our um, handle looks like. Post it on your story or post it on your own page. Um, if you don't have anything, feel free to email us. Um, can I email one of you ladies and one of you ladies with your email? Would that be a good place for them? Absolutely, to also? yeah, sure, yes, definitely. Okay, so either Kara at bloomtvnetwork.com or Anna at bloomtvnetwork.com. Anna Galena. Yeah, Anna Galena. Anna Galena. Yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we would, love, we would really love to see you guys do these vases and post it. Like, I want to go home to, like, I actually have a whole collection of vases that I have been saving just to paint. And I don't paint stuff. Like, like my thing is I like to create gardens. And that, that is my way of being artistic. But I, I just had mm -hmm. this collection of vases. And I'm like, I want to save these and I want to paint them one day. So now I have my excuse to do that. <laughs> Kara, I need to show. tell you something before what? you before you go, because someone at the beginning of what? the show was like, I love Kara's festive. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't planning on wearing this the whole show, but they just kind of stuck. I mean, you know, I'm only on here an hour. So it, it's, you know, it, it goes with the show theme today. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> Those are the show things. So I actually have my little flower display. All these flowers I grew at my farm. I had to bring in the sunflowers that are blooming right now because we talked all about sunflowers on the show last week. And today I'm going to show you something simple and fun that you can do for your table. Maybe if you have like a little herb garden you know, right outside of your home. I know me, I am actually having several people over to swim in the pool and to have a barbecue. And so I'm gonna have a cute little table set up. And so I thought it would be fun to welcome my guests. You know, I have my, I have my napkins here, gotta have the 4th of July theme. And then I've just put together this simple little Perfect. bouquet that I will be laying on top of the napkin. So when they sit down, you know, it'll be like a nice little welcome for them. 
And uh, also it'll be a great like little conversation piece because people will be like, what is this? And so as they mm -hmm. say that, let me tell you what I have in this cute little bundle right oh. here. Yeah, so I grow all of this at my farm. I have a couple of favorite herbs that I love to grow. Um, Jessie, I love that she brought in the lavender into her drinks in the segment today. Um, I grow lavender as well. So I live in the Nashville, Tennessee area and I love to grow uh, a lavender called Lavandula Phenomenal. I feel like it does pretty well in my soil. Lavender really likes good, well-draining soil. So just so you guys know, but I've got some lavender right here we're gonna use today and it smells mm -hmm. so good. And okay. by the way, one of my videos that I have on Bloom TV Network uh, that I, I have on there is all about harvesting lavender at the right stage and also how to dry lavender properly mm -hmm. later for later. So, okay. yeah, got I that. Love that. And then my other little purple pop in our little bouquet today, this is an oregano right here. Isn't it so cute? It's got these cute little flower heads. This is called Drops of Jupiter Oregano. And it's, yeah, it is a perennial for us in my zone, zone seven. So this comes back every year. And I'm really excited because this is the first year I've gotten to use it because I just planted it last year. So we have nice. this we're gonna put in our bouquet. And then I love to grow mint for foliage in my bouquets. And because mint is very abundant. Uh -huh. And word <laughs> caution, caution here. Um, if you plant mint, it spreads like wildflower. So you don't want to plant mint in your flower beds because it will take over your flower beds. They, it needs to be in uh, a container. Okay. Actually, preferably without a hole because mint will, the roots will come out and it will find the earth somewhere else. So uh, a, a pot without a hole is good. I have it planted on my farm in an area that's away from everything that it can just go wild and I love it. So the first mint I have is called orange mint and that is this one right here. And the second mint that I have is this beautiful, like dusty gray mint. It is called mountain mint. That's pretty. I, I love that. I've never seen that one. It's yeah. So this, this is one of my favorites. It's actually a really long stem. I just have it cut down for the show right here, but this is beautiful in a bouquet because it really rounds out a bouquet and is a nice filler. And so I have all of these and the last little element to my cute little posy bouquet for our napkin is um dried status have you oh, have you ever worked with pretty. status uh, yes. yes yes so i grow status and it dries just like this whatever color the status is it dries beautifully and just like it so i have this little piece here and so for our little bouquet i'm just gonna um take my lavender it's, it's just it's the easiest little thing here you just have your little bundle and then I'm going to strip the leaves off this. Now you have a test in, that you're going to give us a test check, right? Like you do every week. <laughs> yeah. They're asking about know, that. Right? Our audience wants a test. I know. I need a, a test. test. How do I know? How do I know? The lavender I one. I don't have the, the spot. test <laughs> check. So I try to harvest the lavender when it's just starting to open right here. Uh -huh. Um and then it will continue to open after this. Like you will retain the best fragrance if you harvest it at this stage. Okay. But I mean, okay. laughter is great to harvest at any stage, really. Any so stage. I, I have no mind blowing test this week. I'm so very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> totally okay. teasing you. I know, but I know. it's great I know. that you tell us that we can harvest it while not all the flowers are open because a lot of people will think, oh, we need to wait until everything opens. So yeah. that's that's a good test. Well, if you wait uh, for every for all the lavender buds to be open, the bumblebees, if you've ever grown lavender, they love it. All the, all my honeybees are at my farm. They are all over the lavender. And so they actually take away some of the fragrance of the lavender because they're Ooh. on there eating it, which is fine. I want them to. Yeah. Um, but I grab some for me, too, before they get to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they really love it. And the, the pollinators really love all the mint as well. This mountain mint, they go crazy over that. So we've got our lavender. We've got our oregano. And it's just, you're just putting the little bunches together. I just cut a tiny little stem 
the little side shoot off this mountain mint and we just lay it on top of there and then let's see where is my next piece oh we have got my orange mint right here now i actually cut this early this orange mint has a purple flower that will happen in a couple of weeks okay did you got did you guys know that mint flowers no see yeah, i knew does. there was something you were holding back on you knew there was something you were keeping from me but i'm like now that, that i did not know um i also would love to talk a little bit about the cost because I'm, i know okay. it's hard for you to actually you know yeah. put a price on this but i feel like that's to all of those things grow pretty much in abundance so it's a really an very inexpensive exp inexpensive way to really pack a punch on your table so well it's you know mint is so easy to propagate so Whenever I give, whenever I um, sell a bouquet and I actually have one of these long mint stems in there, if you leave mint and water for a few days, it will start rooting, which means oh. you will have a plant uh, okay. on your hands. Um, and all you do is you take that, you take that mint and you're going to stick that rooted stem and put it in some potting soil in your house first and water it and let, you know, let it go a few weeks to grow the roots out and kind of get established. And then okay. you're going to put outside like in a shady area for a couple of days to let it acclimate to the temperature outside and then you move it to sun for a few days and then you can plant it in your garden after that and you will have mint like for years mint is very uh -huh. hard to get rid of i love that i'm curious how many jesse i'm curious how many varieties of mint do you actually grow in your home garden i <laughs> I have several. I have lemon mint, the traditional mojito mint. Uh -huh. um, I've done orange mint before, um, spearmint. I love mint. Uh, even as a, a simple sort of flavorant for iced water, if you mm -hmm. pack it in, in a big thermos with some lemon slices, some fresh lim mint leaves that you've bruised a little bit, because that's mm -hmm. the trick with mint or any herb is you bruise it and the oils will come out. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot, but I have a question for you, Kara, because this is yeah. something I've always wondered. Is there a best time of day to go and cut or harvest your herbs? Oh yeah, very early in the morning, like at sunrise, yeah. before the heat of the day. You wanna to try to harvest all of your herbs and your flowers. And if you just aren't a morning person and can't get up then, do it at sunset when the day has cooled down a bit and it is not hot outside. The key is if you try to cut mint in the heat of the day when the sun is blaring down, you're gonna bring this mint inside and it's gonna flop over. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes it will perk back up after several hours in the water, but early in the morning is the best. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you. Great yeah. job. Wait to try it. Okay. Someone so said, I heard you only cut a new growth for mint. On new growth. Well, I mean, so what mint does for me at my farm is it, it dies back down in the winter. So each new year, all the mint just grows up and I just harvest from that each year. So technically it's new growth for me every year. But you definitely want to make sure that it is more mature and long stems. Um, because if you try to cut little baby mint plants, I mean, that's fine. I guess if you want to use that in drinks. But for cut flowers, you definitely want to make sure that the the you stems have. are about 18 inches long because they're pretty mature at that point and then you can cut it. So awesome. Thank you so last, much, Kara. Yeah, the last oh, thing love to our, uh, little bouquet is I just have some jute twine, very easy. Uh -huh. you whatever you have at your house. And you know, you just tie a little knot. And because of the magic of I already have this done, here's our <laughs> finished little bundle right here. And you so just love it. Napkin, Beautiful. And it's just really for your holiday celebration, hey! your friends will come over and you'll be like, what is this? And you'll be like, oh, smell it. Because that's what I say. I'm like, hey, you got to smell this. And so you'll smell it and they'll be like, I've never smelled fresh lavender before. And you will open them up to a whole new world of freshness. <laughs> wow, that's love incredible. It. I love Gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And well, here we love giving away things. So I just got news from Monica, our CEO, that if any of you guys are viewers, send us pictures of a jar, a bottle, or something that you paint using the on-stick mix. We will give everyone that sends a picture a uh, one-month subscription to Bloom TV. 
So really do it, do it for the fun. You're gonna love Bloom TV. It's filled with so much beautiful information about our flower world. A lot of things that we might have never considered because I mean, I'm a florist and I would use flowers for designing, but now I've learned that there are people like Dion inspired to paint, like Jesse making drinks with them, Kara farming and having, teaching us about having a flower garden, not mostly, because you want to farm, but mm -hmm. so you can have your flowers and bring them inside. Now we can also have our flower garden to eat them. I mean, <laughs> Bloom TV Absolutely. is incredible. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Make sure you guys go on to Bloom TV Network and every single week they send out a newsletter. Now this is going to keep you informed. We're going to remind you of the giveaways. We're going to remind you, we're going to target some of the Bloom experts and what our topics are. We're going to remind you when a new collaboration comes out with what women create inside their magazine, their magazine and on our uh, Bloom TV Network. So there's a lot of things going on and the best way to find out about it is going to the newsletter and subscribing. So, Absolutely. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just, I was so excited. I was going to tell them about the Instagram page too, you know, where they please, can go and find please. us. We are on Instagram at flowers and friends underscore talk show on Instagram. And that is where we love to share clips of the shows each week and who our new guests are that are going to be on for each week. So make sure you follow us there and let's play uh, the Eden video right now. And then we will come back and say goodbye. Yes, absolutely. Yay. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. I am very excited for next week's show. Are we able to tell them a little bit about who might come on with us? Or are we going to, we can, Anna? Tell them, tell them. Get them no, excited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you tell them because I don't want to say the name wrong. But I'm super excited of, about Ace. It's Ace coming on, right? Ace Berry. It's how we say it wrong. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting show. Tell them about Ace Kara, please. Yeah, Ace is a floral designer, and he was on, I believe he was on HBO, The Bloom Show, and so he's just so fun, and he is going to be at a floral event next week, and he's going to kind of be there and showing us around um, the conference that they're doing and telling us about it, and we are just super excited about that. Oh, his 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 clips on Bloom TV, when I, I watched his video, and I immediately went and followed him on Instagram, and I've just really already, really, I love his passion for his designs. They're very extravagant and I'm all in. So I'm really looking forward and we hope that you will tune in and we want to thank you so much for being here with us today. Yes, Jesse, thank you so much for everything. Everyone, you have some really great ideas for this weekend. And just like every other week, please join us next week. Tell them why, Kara. Because everything is better with flowers and friends.